Okay, hi. My name is Alyssa. Um, welcome to my channel. This is my first Why Not Budget With Me video. Uh, just a heads up, I don't normally sound like this. I'm getting over a some kind of respiratory illness. Um, it was not COVID, but it was something. So that's also maybe why I sound a little bit out of breath as well. Anyway, welcome to my channel. I So watching YNAB videos is such a guilty pleasure of mine. I just love, um, I'm just so curious about everyone else's finances and how money relates to their life and their goals. And I want more YNAB budget videos. There are not enough. So I'm trying to be the change that I want to see in the world. I am going to put out YNAB budget with me videos. So um, I don't want to talk too much because I can ramble on and on and on. But I want to give you enough of a context about me um, and my budget and my financial journey thus far. So I'm 33 years old. Um, I work from home and I'm currently living with my parents. And that was not a financial decision uh, originally. It was just um, I was kind of in between a relationship. Um, well, I just ended the relationship and I was trying to figure out like where I wanted to go next. So I shacked up with my parents and I've been here um, for almost two years. Wow. Wow. Um, but I do plan on moving out um, probably the first quarter of 2024. So I'm starting to budget for that. But all that to say, I was not financially literate until about March of this year when I came across the personal finance community on YouTube, um, specifically Caleb Hammer. <laughs> uh, if you know, you know, he completely opened my eyes like I thought I was okay with money before because I was making enough to pay my bills pay off my credit card um but that was it like I wasn't really seeing my money grow but I was expecting it to grow <laughs> um so Caleb really opened my eyes to where my money was going and where I should be putting it so in a matter of just this year um so you can see over here i've got about twenty five thousand dollars after my credit card debt which this is a zero interest card that i'm actually leveraging um i'm putting all my monthly expenses on it and i have the money to pay it off um thanks to YNAB, but i'm doing that so i can gain interest on this amount sitting in my savings account up here versus paying it off um, since it is zero interest until summer of next year. So that's what I'm doing there. But so I have um, $25,000 um, including this. And then I have $71,000 invested in my various assets right now, which that's that's completely new to me. So a year ago, my net worth was like $40,000. And that's only because someone told me to open a Roth IRA when I was 30 years old. <laughs> That's when I first heard about Roth IRAs um, and the fact that maybe I should be putting some money aside for retirement. And that's all, like that, that was the extent that I took it, was just opening a Roth IRA and maxing it out every year. So that's really all I had to my name. And I didn't really even understand like like, I thought that that was enough for retirement, was just maxing that out every year. Um, so this year, since March specifically, I completely just woke up to my finances and my goals and um, how to make my money work for me. And I'm so thankful that I have been living with my parents during this time because all the money that I would have been spending towards rent... I'm basically shoveling into my investments to quote unquote catch up on retirement. Um, and everyone's on their own financial journey, you know? I just, for me specifically, it would be different if I were like, 
paying off student loans or something like that. But it's, I I don't know, it kind of depresses me to look back at, um, I track my net worth in Mint since 2014. And it's kind of sad to go back and look at how stagnant my net worth was. Like it was positive. I didn't have any credit card debt. But so my net worth was positive by like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. And that's kind of just where it stayed. Uh, because I wasn't, I didn't understand like why you should be saving money and what I should be saving money for and like investing. I didn't know. So I was essentially kind of living paycheck to paycheck without even really knowing it. Um, So I just wanted to point that out because I'm in a very privileged position right now living with my parents um, that I'm able to do that. When I move out, I'm not going to be able to put as much towards investing as I am and even savings. Like I'm going to be putting more money towards rent and living expenses. Um, So I just wanted to call that out, um, that this is all just very new to me and something that I've done in in the past, um, what, six months? seven, eight months. Um, Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Also, I'm a 1099 contractor, so I pay quarterly taxes. And yeah, I don't want to talk too much. I've already talked way too much. So I'm what I'm going to do actually. Oh, and this money, I get paid weekly from my contracting job. And this ready to assign also includes some interest that I got from my high yield savings accounts. So that's really nice. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and just set this aside for a second. And I have this bills view. This is all just the boring stuff that I don't care to look at once it's funded. Um, And this is what I consider my month ahead. Um, I really only care to fund my actual like my bills. And this even includes subscriptions. It's just everything that is on auto auto withdrawal. I just want to have that funded for the next month. Um, So that's what my month ahead fund is for. I'm going to fix this with my next month category and go back. Okay, perfect. Then I'll go ahead and put this back into ready to assign. And then I set aside $300 a week for the next month of bills. And as you could see, my um, my living expenses, well, they're not my living expenses, but just my fixed bills were like 900 something. So $300 a week, that gets me anywhere from 12 to $1,500, depending on how many uh, paycheck weeks are in the month for me. So the goal with that is by the end of February, um, around the time that I'm looking to move um, this available amount for my next month's bills should be about like $2,200, which is what I'm anticipating for my uh, bills once I move out and get my own apartment and stuff. So that's why I fund it a little bit extra right now. So we got that out of the way. And then I do $500 a week towards my retirement. Um, That's my HSA, my Roth IRA, and my SEP IRA. And then I've been putting aside $250 a week for taxes. That will have to go up depending on, um, I may possibly be moving back to Pittsburgh. And this amount that I set aside with city taxes and state taxes in Pennsylvania. Um, Oh, I should mention I live in Tennessee right now. So there's no state tax. I just pay federal and self-employment tax. But yeah, this will have to go up to probably like 350 at least if I moved to Pennsylvania. Um, but for now, that's that. Oh, and I actually forgot. So I, this is the only category where I actually match up the amount to this account. This account specifically is my tax savings account. And um, that's just what I like to do. So, and I actually, I made all the transfers to get that up to 3,000. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, 3,000 minus 2, 7, 3, 9, 
0.01. Okay, great. Then for groceries, I'm just going to do, I'm going to get this up to 40. That should be good for the week. Restaurants, I don't need to fund this. My mom and I go out <laughs> once a week for tacos and margaritas. And this is left over from last week because it was Thanksgiving and we just didn't go out. So I don't need to fund that this week. Supplements, I do $10 a week. This is for creatine and protein powder. I'm a power lifter, so that helps me get big and strong. Okay, just a quick explanation. Um with my category groups so they're a work in progress but what i've noticed is i much prefer for reports um like i don't really care all of my uh variable expenses for the most part like i don't really care to separate them out on reports um so i just keep these categories i don't really fund them besides this personal category which is more like luxury it's for haircuts and like um like luxury personal care items that cost a little bit more than you know a cheap face wash at the grocery store um i like to set aside money for that but otherwise these are where i track my spending so i down below which i'll show you in a minute um i actually like to keep I like to save for very specific things. Like I get very specific. Um, so for like giving, I have a whole category group down here, special occasions, where I specifically save for each person's birthday and Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, showing up with a bottle of wine to a party. I save for Christmas. Um gifts for wedding showers and baby showers um stuff like that but i don't care to get this granular on reports so what i end up doing is when i spend the money i'll just transfer like if i bought a gift for my mom's birthday i'll just transfer this money up to this giving category um and spend it from there so that on the reports it just shows up under this di discretionary group that's just how i like to do it um, so that's why these, for the most part, are they just kind of stay empty until I spend something. And then for gas, I am blessed and I only fill up like once every six weeks because I work from home. And um, this is more than enough. Uh, gas has been going down. It'll probably cost me 45 to fill up, but I like to have that buffer. And then this um so i'm just gonna get this up to 40. i want to fund this 20 dollars a month but i kind of messed it up um wait so we'll do 40 minus 22.93 and then i'm gonna change this to a needed for spending okay $20. great great um so that's for like oil changes basically i have a separate fund for like auto repair and stuff like that also this is where i will spend <laughs> my auto repair savings like this is where i save for just a simple oil change um but then when i actually have like a big repair i will put that money into this category later and fund it if that makes any sense it's just what my it's just what my brain likes okay and then um therapy i do 25 dollars a week i need to figure out i want it <laughs> i want like a monthly savings builder but weekly i want it to ask me for 25 dollars a week um so i don't know i need to figure that out later um, it's I go once every four to eight weeks and it costs $140 every time and I have a an appointment in a few days so I will be spending that and then I want to be saving up for my next appointment these are all funded 
And then we'll go ahead and fund all of my special occasion sinking funds and we'll minimize that. Okay. Um, so welcome to my banana stand. I did not come up with this. This is an arrested development reference. Um, basically, there's always money in the banana stand. And I didn't even, I didn't come up with using that for this category on my own. I like to go to the YNAB subreddit and see what other people use as their category names. And so many people use this as their emergency fund or like sinking fund names. Um, so I totally stole that. But I love it because, so like I said, I like to get really granular with my savings and then pull that money up into my spending categories when I need it. So like literally there's always money in the banana stand because I don't, like this is where I just pack money in um, for later and for very specific purposes. I won't explain all of these because I don't want to keep you here for half an hour. Although I will just say for legal and employment purposes, this is a joke. <laughs> so this this category is my like emergency, emergency, emergency fund. This used to have $10,000 in it. Um, but then it, last month, I actually moved... Um, Seventy-two fifty into my medical deductible because that yeah I have a really high deductible, and then I put I made my car repair fund up to fifteen hundred dollars. To me, those are like the biggest two emergencies that usually come up for people, right? So I didn't. It feels better to have that split out than to just have ten thousand dollars sitting that I can never ever ever touch. Um, like, yeah, it just felt better to have it split out. So now, since I'm going to be a month ahead with my bills, with my month ahead fund, um, this would, like, I was going to get it to three months of bills. So like 6,000 to 7,000, um, for when I move out. But it's not a rush right now. Um, that's the ultimate goal would be to get it to 6000 But now that I'm thinking about it, I probably would only need to get it to f like four, maybe like 4400 maybe 5000 Um, And this would be for like absolute, like I completely blow through all of my other sinking funds for whatever reason like i lose my job i can't even think of like why i would use this money um so yeah that's what that is like emergency 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 fund that i will like never ever 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 touch um but i just wanted to mention that because of the name okay so what to do with this money i'm gonna go ahead and fund big ticket this is for like concert tickets and stuff like that that cost a lot of money and then these categories that I have money um in the title that's just where I want to cap it at I wish YNAB had something where you could you know assign $120 a month until I reach $750 and then just stop it um but they don't have that yet so that's how I do that so yeah, I, just, I think $750 would be enough and then I can use this $120 a month elsewhere. But I'll fund that for now. And then we'll go ahead and fund, uh, yeah, car tires, tech, and unplanned travel. I also have this UFTA fund here. That's a Midwest saying. It might even be specifically Minnesota. I'm originally from Minnesota, um, but UFTA, it's like, it's an exclamation, like a negative exclamation. Um, who is it? Jessie. I forgot her YouTube name, but I watch her budgeting videos. Um, I'm so sorry. I forgot her YouTube name, but she has an UFTA fund as well, and I really liked that. And I'm saving up just like 200 to $250 for like 
less severe, like mild emergencies. Like maybe if I get, um, you know, a $200 speeding ticket or something, um, that's what that is for. Cause I just like, I don't want to (laughs) ever touch this actual emergency, emergency fund. This would be like an income replacement fund if that ever happened. So yeah, that's what that is for. And then I think what I'm going to do with this extra money is go ahead and put it in my next month fund and get that beefed up. And just like that, we're done. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, um, please be nice. (laughs) Um, Yeah. If you want to sign up for this software, I will have a link in the description. The software, YNAB, changed my life. Like, I wish I found this 10 years ago. I would have been in a completely different space financially. Um, But, you know, you live and learn. So I'll have that link down below. Um, I don't really know how to end these videos. So I will just catch you next time. Okay, bye.